Hi everyone, first let me introduce myself. I am Catherine from the College of Nursing BSN 3A and today guys I will share to all of you my giving topic. I will discuss it, I mean. So, yun na nga, tumakol nga yung asa namin at nasira ang aking pagbibidyo. I'll begin with the discussion of my given topic, which is protein S deficiency. I hope you guys will have an idea after watching this video. So, let's begin with the, deep, with the table of contents. Includes the description, epidemiology, risk factor, cause, diagnosis, treatment, and the summary. So, first is the description. Protein S deficiency is another natural anticoagulant normally produced by the liver. APC requires protein S to inactivate certain clotting factors when the level of protein S is deficient. This inactivation process is diminished and the risk of thrombosis can be increased. So, what is this APC, guys? APC resistance is a common condition that can occur with other hypercoagulable states. APC is an anticoagulant and resistance to APC increases the risk of venous thrombosis. Moving on to the epidemiology, the exact prevalence of protein S deficiency is unknown due to the difficulty in diagnosing the protein S. So according to the National Organization, for rare disorder or NORD, protein S deficiency is a rare genetic disorder of blood coagulation that is caused by a variation in the PROS1 gene. So, the risk factor, like patients with protein C deficiency, those with protein S deficiency have a greater risk of recurrent venous thrombosis early in life and also with recurrent PE, or what we call pulmonary embolism. Thrombosis most commonly occur in the axillary, mesenteric, and cerebral veins. So, I also include, guys, what is the prevention of pulmonary embolism, which is one of the risk factor of protein S deficiency. When we look at the photo, guys, you will easily identify the difference of a normal patient and the patient who develop DVD or deep vein thrombosis. When we observe the blood blood, guys, yung patient na mayroong deep vein thrombosis is yung blood blood niya po is dikit-dikit na po. So, preventing blood clots with, with which lead to pulmonary embolism in the profound veins in the legs will assess stop pulmonary embolism. So, moving on to the cause. Um, it is commonly inherited but it can also be acquired. Acquired protein as deficiency can also occur in pregnancy. DIC, liver disease, nephrotic syndrome, HIV infection, and the use of L-asparaginase have all been associated with reduced protein S levels. So, meron po ako guys na panood na video sa YouTube. Um, isa po siyang patient na na-diagnose po ng stroke and one of the cause po is meron po siyang protein S deficiency. And she also said na yung, yung mother niya before, nung pinagbubuntis pa daw po siya, is meron pong protein S deficiency. And at the age of 20 plus, na-diagnose po siya ng stroke and Huli niya na po nalaman na yung mother niya po pala noon is meron pong protein S deficiency. And 
yun nga po, na-acquired niya po yun sa kanyang mother. So, moving on to the diagnosis, blood test will be performed to detect the activity of protein S in the blood. So, assays. Assays are the tests that evaluate the quantity and activity of certain enzymes in the blood. The amount of protein S in your body varies depending on a number of factors, including your age. So, molecular genetic testing. Um, in certain people, molecular genetic testing can confirm a diagnosis of protein S deficiency. In treatment naman po, anticoagulation therapy involves the administration of medications such as heparin and warfarin, which thin the blood and make it more difficult for it to clot. Warfarin-induced skin ne necrosis is possible. Although ang warfarin po, an anticoagulant medication, is commonly used to treat and prevent thrombosis, many drug-drug and drug-feed interactions are associated with its use. So a careful medication history, including OTC medications, herbs, and other substances such as vitamins and minerals, is important when oral anticoagulation therapy is prescribed. In addition naman po, consultation with the pharmacist is recommended to assess the extent to which concurrent medications may affect the anticoagulant and for appropriate dosage adjustment. And then the summary naman po, a protein S deficiency is a blood clotting problem. Some people who have this syndrome are more likely to produce irregular blood clots. So, I also state po in the second page, the exact prevalence of protein S deficiency was unknown. And then, I also include, I, I mean, I also state there po the greater risk of factor of protein S, which is the recurrent venous thrombosis and the pulmonary embolism. Well, the main cause of it is sometimes acquired in pregnancy. And so, yun nga po, um, how does, how does the protein is deficiency occurred and how it can be treated po. And yun lamang po. And maraming maraming salamat po for listening. And God bless you all po. This is the, the reference po pala of my discussion. So yun lamang po and God bless you all.